also these interesting concepts that have to do with surveillance capitalism okay that's why artificial intelligence as as an industry is being quickly developing and it's being heavily invested because we need new and, and uh, better ways to collect data from individuals from anyone who uses uh, internet so um, these are very brief and quick information regarding artificial intelligence this is not a definition but we can understand that artificial intelligence in a general way remember this is an introduction uh, a generally speaking uh, way of um, presenting the topic in a general way uh, artificial intelligence since it is composed by big data analysis big and small data analysis analysis in, in, a, in plural uh, by algorithms by neural lear neural neural learning and network and by deep learning also so interesting data by 2020 only 0.5 percent of the internet traffic was being analyzed by 2020 that it happened like a blink ago like yesterday by 2020 only 0.5 percent of the internet traffic was being analyzed through in uh, artificial intelligence or through uh, specialists but by 2025 it is expected to grow up to 33 percent that's crazy like from zero to 32 percent in less than five years it's crazy and um, here i put each day we come closer to the singularity state uh, I'm not gonna discuss nor talk about the singularity or, or regarding singularity any any of that but it's such a lovely topic to introduce to you all of night uh, or to people which whoever you're speaking uh, this topic to because singularity gets to be a really really weird concept so uh, throw that ball to your to your alumni to see how they react okay uh, of course all this surveillance capitalism and digital technology and artificial intelligence etc of course they not pose a full threat to the humanity to us the people it is almost to none almost to zero it's impossible for us to uh, to protect to, de to defend ourselves uh, in such a uh, efficient way from surveillance capitalism schemes uh, if we want to participate in the internet sphere so that, that's one, one information that's a really important information we can all, we can't escape from uh, surveillance capitalism schemes but we can do some activities um, in where we can uh, perform in a better way as users uh, some of the benefits of digital technology are low production costs uh, we can reach more citizens we can reach broader uh, geographical spaces uh, also uh, it's a competence uh, development and transformation for example in the I'm gonna say random information for example, in the 1950s, uh, half of the women, I don't have this data precisely, but let, let's make an assumption. In the 1950s, half of the women knew how to use uh, sewing machines. How big data is helping our daily lives? For example, um, we have these four uh, for examples to report situations, to lively report situations, for example, uh, some uh, accident developing. So the need of firefighters to go and... Um, firefighters to go and to approach a situation, I don't know how to say it. To, to police to go to a specific situation, violence in a public uh, environment and a private environment whatever um, of course marketing is taking a lot of advantage from from this okay so how can we use big data 
um, to favor to report situation to describe behaviors for example uh, in coffee shops in public coffee shops uh, they can put music according to what people want to listen uh, and automatically they configure themselves and um, they leave the bartender out of the responsibility of putting music according to what people uh, want to play okay the third one has to do um, like a specific example it has to do for example with ways that helps us uh, avoid um, congestion or slow transit situations uh, through the suggestion of alternative routes while we're driving and uh, most interestingly to anticipate solutions or anticipate decision making uh, activities for example um, sensors can predict a lack of fresh water in some crops or freezing crops or uh, decomposing early decomposition of, of some crops cultivos so um, that's an interesting way of, of um, using technology in our favor if you want to introduce someone to the topic like briefly introduce someone to the topic okay you can go speaking the devil you can go to Netflix and watch these two sort of documentaries I don't know if they're formally documentaries as, as I know them well anyway uh, you can watch the great hack you can watch the social dilemma in what to read of course I'm gonna recommend this book this book is like my doctoral thesis Bible one of them uh, in the age of surveillance capitalism by Shoshana Zuboff uh, that says uh, that it's called well in English it's called people power and profits it's by Joseph Stiglitz in Spanish they changed the, the name a little bit uh, and it's great because it also addresses uh, digital economies and digital ca capitalism in a much more easier uh, or briefer way that Shoshana Zuboff does if you want to go into more deeper uh, conversations into a more deeper uh, themes or schemes you have to read Mark Fisher here I have my my electronic uh, copy of post capitalism desire it was one of the well it was the, the final lectures compiled before uh, Mark Fisher passed away and Mark Fisher has a really interesting uh, way of seeing things uh, seeing or approaching capitalism from a techno societal but heavily philosophical influence uh, perspective <sighs> well these suggestions what to listen this these suggestions are for spanish-speaking audiences uh, interesting enough that in McNabb I think he's American but he produces uh, its content in, in Spanish he works in the uh, Universidad de Veracruz he's really good uh, speaking about philosophical thing, themes regarding capitalism and a whole other uh, aspects uh, you, you, you can go to listen to Darren McNabb regarding Gilles Deleuze uh, Felix Guattari proposals from the anti-Oedipus and um, thousand plateaus etc i mean from the philosophical perspective there's a lot of authors you can work with for example uh, i'm gonna make this uh, really brief uh, you can go back to Gilles Deleuze he speaks about Spinoza which Spinoza speaks also about capitalism the foundations of capitalism in a different way but you can you can read this of course, uh, regarding Spinoza, Baruch Spinoza, you can approach Antonio Negri, Tony Negri. This is a great book, The, the Savage Anomaly. I don't know how it's called in English. In Spanish, it's called La Anomalia Salvaje. You can approach that. Uh, you, you, I mean, 
he writes in a lovely way. For me, it was really difficult to understand at the beginning, but it became uh, such a good author and it helped me understand. Uh, of course, you can read uh, Michel Foucault, Vigilar y Castigar. I don't know how, how is this translated to English, like Survey and Punish. Uh, I don't know, uh, but Foucault has really, really lovely constructs, and Foucault has been really, it's used by a wider range of topics, it's gonna, if you know nothing about Foucault, it's gonna blow your mind of uh, how many topics he used to, to address in his uh, productive life. Do not cancel Michel Foucault's work, please, he's being cancelled right now, don't do that. Uh, also, you can address uh, Slavo Cicek. Kristen Harris is directing the Center for, of, for Human Technology. Tristan Harris is heavily being criticized uh, because he is a deflector of the technological industry and most people, uh, radical thinkers, uh, think that he's not really into um, collaborating with a real change but I'm gonna suggest you to go visit the Center for Humane Technology website which uh, has so, has good information. Uh, in Argentina the Universidad Nacional de San Martín, San Martín National University, I think that, that's how you can call it in English, you can go check the Digital Economy Observatory, uh, they're doing a great, great work uh, regarding that. You can follow Pensar con Deleuze, which is a um, page by Fernando Marazzo. He's my, uh, one of my philosophy teachers and he's really, really passionate and good about uh, Deleuze thinking. I don't know what, what, where I left that book. Give me a second, I'm gonna come back. But let me finish this and I'm gonna come back with uh, more book suggestions. And also you can follow in Instagram the Red Latinoamericana de Antropología Digital. Uh, they're less active, but they also hold a lot of interesting information regarding that. If you think you can read and digest uh, philosophical contemporary thinking being written in Spanish, I'm gonna recommend to get, at least if you live in Mexico, I'm gonna recommend to get these two books. The first one is called, I'm gonna read it in Spanish, Vitalismo Filosófico y la crítica a la axiomática capitalista en el pensamiento de Deleuze. This is the first one, the second one is called Vitalismo Deleuzeano, perspectivas críticas sobre la axiomática capitalista. They are both coordinated by uh, José Escurdia, philosopher at uh, Universidad Nacional uh, here in Mexico, uh, the UNAM. Uh, you don't have to have uh, philosophy foundations to read them so if you are a twitter follower you can go check out carlos these two guys are uh, from argentina carlos colari he lives in spain and he works at pompo fabra university and cecilia danesi she's affiliated to the uh, universidad de buenos aires uva uva university of buenos aires uh, they post really interesting information on social media and with this I finish my summary of, of this four hour lecture. I hope it gets really interesting for you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your interest. Uh, the more people we get into uh, cap digital capitalism uh, conversation, the better. So. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. See you next time. See you soon. Thank you.